And now, towards the end, I just have a couple of things left for, to share with you. And the, for, the first of them is the, the two best kinds of friends mentioned in the Quran. From what I can study, the best kinds of friends you can have, and therefore the best kinds of friends you can be. And one of them is Khalil, and the other is Rafiq, in the Quranic sense. These two terms are two of the most beautiful describing friendship in the Quran. So let's start with Khullah. Khullah is used in the Quran, for example, with Taqu Yawman La Bayan Fihi, you know. Wala khulla wala shafa'a La tajzi nafsun am nafsa shayin Wala bayan fihi Wala khulla tu wala shafa'a Fear a day be, be cautious of a day Where you're not gonna be able to Nobody will benefit anybody else Nobody will pay off anybody else's debts You will not have any sales that day You will not have any friendship that day That kind of friendship Khulla Another word like a varf That comes from khulla is khilal When something goes through something Linguists argue that khulla or a khalil is someone whose, penet whose friendship penetrates deep into your heart. You have a deep-seated love for a friend that you care about and miss so much when you're not with them. That's a khalil. Like you're always thinking about them. And you, you wish you were back with them. That kind of friend. And that's again a rare kind of friendship, right? And this is the kind of friendship Allah Azza wa Jal had with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allahu Ibrahima. Khalila, he was a Khalil to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then also in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Al Akhilau Yoma idin Ba'wahum li Ba'din Adu. That that friends, those kinds of really close friends that were had so much love for each other, judgment day comes and they are enemies to each other. They're enemies to each other, illa al-muttaqeen, except the only exception is al-muttaqeen. And those of you that are Nahum students, you have al-akhilla'u marfu'ah, it's al-akhilla'u la dhamma. And illa al-muttaqeen is mansub. It's called istithna' mufarrah. It's a very strong form of istithna in the Arabic language exception. Meaning the only possible exception to that is people who protected themselves. Meaning protected themselves from making the wrong kinds of friends. They, everybody else, you can think you're the best friends, man. This is my, my ultimate friend. This, you know how we say in America, this is my dog. You know, we don't, I don't probably, you don't probably say that here. It doesn't work. <laughs> like, would you call me? I'm no longer your friend. But, <laughs> you know, but that, that kind of friend, judgment day comes and they're no longer friends. Except people of taqwa. What does that mean? Make your friends based on how con conscious of Allah they are. You know, how, how responsible they are to their deen to their family, things like that. Last couple of things, inshaAllah ta'ala. Judgment day comes around, and Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا The day of judgment comes around, and the, the wrongdoer is like chewing on his hands. He's like biting his hands out of frustration and saying, if only I took up a path alongside the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does a path mean? It's a very beautiful illustration in the Arabic language of a lifestyle. If I only had a lifestyle that is alongside, parallel to the lifestyle of the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you go on a path, when you go on a particular path, then you will find particular travelers with you on that path. Every road has different cars, right? You can't have every car on every road. So when you take one road, you only find certain cars on that road. When you're on one flight, you only find certain passengers on a certain flight. When you're on this path, there's only certain kinds of people that want that destination that you'll find. And those are the friends you'll end up making. When you, this is a really powerful lesson in Quran because the next ayah is about, Ya waylata laytani lam fulanan khalila. I don't even know if there's another ayah in the Quran that has more hasra in it than this one. Ya waylata. And then, وَيْلَتَا نَا وَيْلَتِي وَيْلَتَا This is done for exaggerated hasra. It's mubalaga and hasra. And then, لَيْتَنِي On top of that, more, more hasra. And I keep saying the word hasra, it means regret. This ayah of the Qur'an, possibly the most regret anywhere in the Qur'an. The, most, the ayah filled with the most regret is about what? I wish I didn't take so this guy as a friend. لَمَّا اتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا I wish I didn't take. And literally it says, I, I, I wish I didn't take so and so as a friend. And a Khalil, I told you, is someone you have deep-seated love for. And if you have so much love for them, you would know their name, right? You would know their name. But judgment day comes and you have so much regret and so much hate, that hate fills your heart so much, you can't even remember their name. They're just a fulan to you. لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا That's the regret this person has. 
the, the, the wisdom in these ayat, I can't possibly talk about all of the things in the ayat, but just one thing, one thing I want to highlight. When you play a certain sport, you will make friends that also play that sport. You're going to go to the playground, you're going to find other people playing that sport, you'll make friends with them. When you play a certain video game, you'll find other people playing the same video game, you'll make friends with them. You understand? We make friends based on proximity, especially around our interests. People that are interested in the same things that we are, we end up making closer and closer friends with and the bond strengthens, right? You're on the same, the same team every time, you cooperate with each other in and off the playground and you just kind of develop a bond. That's why teammates are really close friends, right? Or cadets in military school are really close friends because they do all the exercises together and they develop a bond together, right? Now this is the kind of friendship that is being described in the, when the man says Ma'ar Rasul. That if I only took up a path alongside the messenger, if you are really into something for the sake of Allah, you take up, you join an organization, you help a project that is trying to do something to help society, that's doing something to help people, that's doing something to teach people deen, something, some good project. It doesn't necessarily have to be a da'wah project, it could be something that's just, it's good for the Bahraini people, for example. You know, or it helps the youth, like, you know, care one, you're volunteering here. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna start making friends that share the same concern. And as you incur get more involved in those activities, those are some of the closest friendships you have because those friendships were formed under the shade of Allah. Like you came together because of Allah. You came together because you want to be part of the legacy of the Messenger وسلم, and then these friendships are formed. Some of the best friends, like you know, when I teach in the United States at the Dream Program, the nine month program, the Arabic program, the, one of the biggest advantages, more than the Arabic education, the biggest gifts the students leave with is each other. These are people that come from different states, sometimes even different countries, 30 brothers, 30 sisters, and they're spending nine months together, almost living together. I mean, I, they see each other more than they see their, even their families, right? Five, six hours a day they spend with each other. And by the end of it, every single graduation, there are grown men and women crying their face off, including myself. Because we're going to miss each other so much. Because such a bond is created, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to have friends that you formed because you share a mutual positive activity. You're part of something good and you share an activity together. So that's, that's some things about Khalil. And finally, the best. So I know it's been a long time, I know. You guys doing okay? You guys doing okay? Okay. So the last one is Rafiq. Is Rafiq. First, I want to describe what Rafiq means. Rafiq in Arabic or Rifqa or Rafq in Arabic also means comfort. And a Mirthaqa is actually a pillow on your back. If your back is in pain, you put a small pillow to ease your pain. And also a cushion, you know those small cushions on a couch? They're also called Mirthaq. Because you lean on them and you put your pressure on them and they help you relax. A Rafiq is a friend that when you're stressed out, when you're in trouble, when you're having a hard time, going to them is like comfort. They're like a pillow to you that you can lean on any time. And by the way, when people are reclining on a pillow, are they sitting formally or informally? Informally, they're relaxed. This is a friend, you don't have to act a certain way in front of them. You don't have to be super formal. You don't have to watch what you say, like super careful. Are they going to take this the wrong way? Are they going to get angry if I say this? You can chill, you can relax with that kind of friend. You can just be, be yourself. That's a Rafiq. Now, here's the, here's the beautiful part of this. If you just met me, right, and we're sitting in uh, you know, a guest room together, you're going to act a little formal. You're going to sit like very civilized and Assalamu alaikum brother Mimad. Like, I won't do that, but you will, chances are. <laughs> and, I, and I get that sometimes, that people get really, really formal around me because they get a little weird around me. Like, I have that effect on people apparently, right? So, can you imagine that one day we're going to be in Jannah by Allah's mercy and we're sitting like next to Umar radiallahu anhu and he's like twirling his mustache like he used to do in dunya, sometimes you should say, right? He's just sitting there. Are you and I going to be nervous? I, I, I would think I'd be really nervous sitting around Umar radiallahu anhu like, ah. Like you know what happened to me recently? I was in an elevator in, in Kuala Lumpur. I was in an elevator with Sheikh Aydal Qarni and I didn't even know. 
<laughs> was, we're going 17 floors up the elevator. So I mean, I'm super nervous. This is a sheikh in the elevator. I gotta, I gotta behave myself. I mean, you can't do too many crazy things in an elevator. I mean, yeah, but you still get nervous, you know. <laughs> But the idea of, you know, just being super formal around someone because they, you have a lot of respect for them. We do this with our, in many cultures, we do this with our parents. Right, if your dad walks into the house, they're like, oh, 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 oh. was here. <gasps> you know, like you stop breathing properly and you just, you know, that happens. But you know what? Allah Azza wa Jal describes one of the most beautiful ayat. فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ This is the part of the ayah that gets highlighted all the time. That those who obey Allah and the Messenger are going to be among those that Allah did special favor on. They will be counted among which category? They will be in the ranks and be able to have company with the Prophets, those who confirm the truth in the Prophets, as shuhada those who died for the sake of Allah and bear witness, bore witness to the truth, and good people, as salihin These are the four categories, at the bottom of which is the most number, as salihin good people, right? Good people. And then at the end of it, Allah says, وَحَسُنَا أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا What an awesome group of friends these people are. And what kind of friends? Friends you're comfortable around. Can you imagine being comfortable around Rasulullah and not being nervous? Can you imagine being comfortable around like the best of all, all the prophets? Like you're hanging out with Nuh and you're chilling on your pillow like it's all good. You know, Subhan can you even, I, we can't imagine that. That's beyond our imagination. But Allah is giving us that gift in Jannah. But the, the beauty of this ayah is that's actually, it didn't restrict the conversation to Jannah. It didn't restrict it to Jannah. That we can have that, that rifq. And that rafqa also with each other, Muslims with each other in this world. That we find good people that we are comfortable around that we can be ourselves around, that we don't have to be fake around and wear super brands around and say things that are supposedly there to impress them and we don't have to impress them with our epic tweets and our ridiculous photos or whatever. We don't have to do that. They just, they, we can be ourselves with them and they're good people. They're salihin. That's a gift of Allah. Oh, the last thing I'm sharing with you this evening. Allah Azza wa Jal talked about this in Surah Al-Ankabut, one of my favorite surahs in the Quran, Surah Al-Ankabut, the 29th surah. The 29th surah is a late Makki surah. A lot of young Sahaba were there in, in that struggle along the Prophet ﷺ who lost their friends. Parents didn't want to talk to them anymore, friends didn't want to talk to them anymore. They were getting boycotted only because they were Muslim. You know what we're learning from that? If the best, and they're the best people, I mean they're really the best people, and they're boycotted. You know what that means? When you decide to take a turn in your life towards Allah, chances are you will be boycotted by your friends. Chances are you will lose friends along the way. Chances are your people are not going to want to hang out with you anymore. You used to hang out with your friends and do all kinds of things with them. Now you say, no, 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 I can't do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do this. I, you know, no, I'd rather not watch that. You know? You, you, you had a friend, you guys used to talk about girls all the time, but then you, some, something came in, you made a istighfar, then he calls you again, yo bro, guess what I just saw? Guess who I just talked to? And you're like, I don't want to talk about that, bro, it's okay. Well, what happened? What happened? Well, you were okay with that last month? Yeah, that was last month. I'm not like that anymore. Psh, come on, really? And they're trying to reel you back in, right? But then you, you, you just stop yourself, you stop yourself and you say, no, 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 I can't do that anymore. So you know what's going to happen? They're going to say, you're no fun anymore. It's no fun hanging out with you anymore and they'll cut you out. Again, you don't give up on them, but they will. They have no reason to not give up on you. They'll give up on you. And that kind of, they can make you really depressed. You can feel like, I mean, I don't, ever since I started getting more serious about our Allah's deen, I started losing friends. And friends are a big part of life. You, it's, it's a really valuable thing to have in life, right? It's, what are we going to do without our friends? You know? So what does Allah say as a consolation to these Sahaba who are losing friends? Who are even losing family in some cases. Their parents are giving up on them. Like Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas right? What does Allah say to them? He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ People who have iman, people who do good things, I will absolutely enter them 
I will inject them, absolutely, no doubt about it, into the company of the righteous. The ayah before I told you, you will be, one of the gifts of Allah is that you will find friends that you are comfortable with that are righteous. But then you, you say to yourself, well, how am I going to get those friends? And this ayah Allah tells us, look, you lost friends, I see that. You're isolated, you've been boycotted, I see that. You continue to believe in me and do the right thing and you watch. I will put you in the middle of really good people. I will do that for you. لَنُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ يَعْنِي فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ He will enter you into good people's company here and in the next life. What more can we ask for? And I can tell you, this is an absolute fact. It's an absolute fact. My, the, the organization I represent, for example, is not a one-man show. It's not just me. Actually, most of the things that get done in my organization, almost all of the things that get, get done in Bayin, I get done by someone other than myself. I am actually the, the one who does the least amount of work at my organization. Everybody else does the work. But Allah has put people in my path that I couldn't, I couldn't possibly have found them through a job search or through like, I need some good volunteers and things like that. Allah put them in my path. And they're priceless people to me. They're the most valuable people to me, you know? And it, uh, some of them are friends, some of them are employees, and even as employees, they're friends, and they're, they're the most valuable assets you can Im imagine. People that are in business can testify. People that are in business know the hardest thing you can find is people you can trust. A business partner you can trust, an employee you can trust, you know? It's the hardest thing to find. And Allah is saying, you just try to do the right thing, and I will, I will give you that. I will give you the ultimate gift of great friends. And that's really what we want. We want the, the, the salihin to be our friends, the good people to be our friends, righteous people to be our friends, so that that comfort we have with them in this dunya doesn't disappear in the akhirah. You know, Allah already said that. Friends will be enemies on that day. People are going to run from each other on that day, but not these people. إِلَّا muttaqin. Except people of taqwa. So that's really my hope for myself and for all of you. Be on the lookout for good friends. But more than that, you be the good friend yourself. You be a source of good influence. Don't be a consumer. Oh, nobody's good friends with me, therefore I messed up. Well, why aren't you yourself a source of goodness? Why aren't you take leading the way? Why aren't you the first to say, no, 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 I'm not impressed by the hype. You know, I'm going to be who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am. I don't have to fake my fake it and try to be someone I'm not. You know? 